Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe joins us now. Brendan, do these innocent passengers ever get their money back? And if they do, I'm sure it's not easy. Well, there's really two kinds of people who are stopped. Those who are truly innocent, who have nothing on them. Then there are people who are traveling with cash. And as we mentioned in the story, it's completely legal to travel with any amount of money domestically in the United States without declaring it. So some of those people who do have their money seized are indeed innocent and they do get their money back, but that's very, very rare. And sometimes they don't get all of it back. It's like a settlement where they get part of it back. Uh, and then the government doesn't pay their attorney's fees when they're supposed to, uh, because they'll just give the money back when it's not ordered by a judge, essentially short-circuiting the law that was supposed to fix all of this. Now, it is important to point out also that in some cases, they do catch real drug dealers uh, and stop them and intercept their money even when no drugs are found. But, you know, as the legislators in Washington pointed out, you know, to catch those bad guys, you've got to go through a whole bunch of innocent people to get there. Absolutely. And so, uh, obviously, you're sp trying to speak to the DEA agents. They had nothing to say. I'm assuming that they are working with the airlines. Do the airlines have anything to say about this? Well, they do work with the airlines, but it's not like the airlines have that much of a choice. So it's, it's really not fair to pin any of this on the airlines. Because when a federal agent shows up in a public area of a boarding area, uh, you know, they do have certain rights as law enforcement to enforce the law right there. Uh, but they are getting help from the airports as well. The ones we uh, ran into had airport IDs that gave them sort of unfettered access to the airport. So it is all a sort of a system where the airlines, the airports, and the federal agents, and even local police are working together. The big thing is you don't know if that person standing right next to you is an undercover agent or a plainclothes agent or just another passenger waiting to board the flight until they ask to see inside your bag. You do not surrender your Fourth Amendment rights just because you're in an airport. If they want to investigate crimes, they need a warrant or your consent. Got it. Are there any numbers at all as to how many guilty people they're seizing money from versus how many innocent people? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably a little bit tough to get those numbers. Well, I mean, we do have some numbers from some audits. Uh, it's around 6% of the cases where they find money. That's based on a review that we did of local police operating in the Atlanta airport. About 6% of the time, they find money. That means in 94% of the cases, they don't find anything. So you've got to search those 94% to get to the 6%. Um, and then that doesn't mean they're guilty. It just means they're traveling with money. And what we're finding out is that the dog is hitting, the canine is hitting on the money 100% of the time after they've chosen to seize it. And then that gives them the justification to forfeit it. And right now, the courts are agreeing. In terms of hard numbers of how many of the people this happens to, we'd have to file a FOIA, and we did, a Freedom of Information Act request. But those can sometimes take years on the federal level.